सीरीज 2022 एंड इनिशिएट एंड इनिशिएटिव बाय टेक्नो वंजा विजेटीआई दिस इज सोमिल परसोडकर योर होस्ट फॉर द डे विजेटीआई प्राउड लेगेसी हैज बीन अपहेल्ड सिंस इट्स एस्टैब्लिशमेंट इन 1887 विद ब्रिलियंस एंड एजुकेशनल प्रोवेस फर्दरमोर इट हैज थ्राइव्ड इन नर्चरिंग द ब्राइटेस्ट माइंड्स ऑफ सोसाइटी पायनियर्स ऑफ डाइवर्स फील्ड्स इंक्लूडिंग द pioneers of diverse fields including apj abdul kalam mr atin tata mr nana patikar and many others have graced the, us with their presence while progressively illuminating young minds to new areas of interest adding another gem to our glorious list of dignitaries uh, i would like to announce that the person joining us today was a full time voluntary activist for 10 years before joining the ias He was also a freelance journalist during the same period and undertook extensive study tours of the country. The outcome was the book Aswastha Dakshachi Diary based on the reflections on experiences of these visits. He later went on to join the Indian Administrative Services in 1986. Ladies and gentlemen, please join your hands together as we welcome none other than Mr. Avinash Dharmadikari. Mr Dharmadikari is the founder director of Chanakya Mandal a network organization for competitive exams career guidance entrepreneurship development and personality development he is also the chief editor of a periodical for the youth Chanakya Mandal apart from this he has also authored several books which include Nava Vijaypath Ratra Gahiricha Tisra Prahari Appa and Ani Appan Savilit In his tenure as an IAS officer he has held several important positions few of which include director of the state archives in mumbai and district collector of raigad active participation in literacy universalization of education women's farmer consumer movements and land and water conservation are some of the works taken up by him mr dharmadikari resigned from his post on march 1 1996 but has continued to serve for the betterment of the society so this small introduction wouldn't do enough justice to you you have blended the eloquent qualities of hard work and persistence with absolute sublimity which can never be unseen we are truly honored by your presence today we will have a q and a session after the lecture so please leave your questions in the live chat below so without any further ado let's be a part of a conversation regarding our part to be a change and self reflect under the guidance of clearly the best so passing it on to you now thank you soumil thank you urvi for the affectionate way in which both of you have welcomed me and introduced me all my dear friends it is always my first and the greatest happiness to start my session with this always namaste in recent years i have always held that this single namaste has a whole lot of deep profound meaning in it that single word namaste means the energy in me chaitanya salutes the energy in you and that also means that all of us are expressions of the same energy and that is what basically makes us all equals so namaste everybody what closely follows that namaste 
is also our Bharatiya Shraddha, as I call it. It is our Bharatiya Shraddha. There is no exact, equally intense and profoundly meaningful word in English for the Bharatiya term Shraddha. That Shraddha, the closest English word happens to be belief, which I find a very shallow word. That Shraddha born out of experience is a prayer. A prayer for everyone. A prayer for this whole world. And it is all my best wishes for all of you. When and if I speak in Marathi, I have also said that whole message in a single sentence. That Marathi sentence happens to be Sarvanna Sarvaka Sarva Shubhecha. All my best wishes for all of you. All my best wishes for all times to come. And those best wishes are absolutely eternal. Unconditional. I said that is our Bharatiya Shraddha of starting anything. Whatever we start. We always start with a prayer. Sarvetra Sukhina Santu. Let everybody be blissful. Prayer for the whole universe. Be it in Sanskrit. Sarvetra Sukhina Santu. Be it in Prakrut that Buddha and Mahavira told us. That is Bhavatu Sabba Mangalam. It means the same. Everybody's welfare. And be it in Marathi. Or I am lucky enough to know basics of many or most of the languages in India because I get to travel a lot. So I know that all, all Indian languages have the same prayer, have the same prayer, everybody's welfare. So what a great pleasure. All my best wishes for all of you. I'm sure you will understand when I say that while we are speaking online, in my mind, I am already there in the campus of VJTI. I remember it as a lovely campus, beautiful campus, the campus full of energy. So like in my mind, I'm already there. I have been to VJTI a couple of times. That has always been a pleasure. Because indeed, in fact, one of the greatest pleasures is to be in the company of intelligent minds, thinking minds. That is like one of the greatest pleasures. I remember that pleasure at VJTI. And even today, as we continue to enjoy and derive the same pleasure, I am supposed to focus on power of learning. And actually, as much as you may be, in fact, I wonder whether even more than you people, I am eager and curious, looking forward to the Q&A session. It makes it more lively. That gives me an opportunity to listen to you too and then respond to the questions. But for us to get going, let us focus on this topic of power of learning. I cannot proceed without not only mentioning, but I cannot proceed without doing a heartfelt muzra again. My vandan, my salute to Shivaji Maharaj. It is a very happy occasion that we are meeting on the day of Shiva Jayanti the English birth date of Shivaji Maharaj. You people belong to the college 
which is named after his great mother veer mata jizau so what a happy coincidence let me express that happiness and also say that we have so much to learn from shivaji maharaj even in modern times i have always maintained that the real legacy of shivaji maharaj i put it at number 1 he has like infinite legacy but what i put at number 1 is he taught us to work for the whole country he taught us to work in 17th century it was fighting and that fighting was with the sword and even there there had to be the brain and the heart behind that sword but if in 17th century we were required to fight with a sword now is the time when we also fight with a pen and we fight with various instruments in our college and later on in our professional life but it is of course fight for the country and that fight is to be done by seeking to serve bharat mata that is like the greatest legacy of shivaji maharaj even in terms of learning there is a great legacy in the light of today's subject i do think that shivaji maharaj is a person who went on learning throughout his life when we start the subject of shivaji maharaj it becomes very difficult for me to stop i am going to force myself to like uh, do my mujra to him and turn to power of learning and still i can't but share with you just one small piece just one small piece Shivaji Maharaj born on land largely like brought up and trained on land understood the importance of navy mind you the foreigners from across the seas had already started coming to india they were building navies and no other king in india understood the importance of navy in throughout the medieval age it is shivaji maharaj and shivaji maharaj alone who understood the significance and importance of navy built a strong navy and that navy defeated absolutely every single enemy of india on the western coast the navy built by shivaji maharaj defeated even the british the east india company defeated the dutch defeated the siddhis at janjira and the story will continue but shivaji maharaj decision to build navy is a lesson learned from history and there are so many lessons to learn from history one of which one very important one probably among top 2 or 3 lessons to be learned when it comes to india that lesson is that in ancient times india had achieved a very high level of development in science and technology there is no doubt about it mathematics geometry metallurgy astronomy the whole architecture and science behind building and construction as displayed in uh, exquisitely beautiful temples india had achieved great strides in science and technology but to our misfortune that progress stopped somewhere i always put it at the time frame where invasions of india began you can say in the 8th century which india was able to defeat eventually another uh, force of invasions in the 10th and 11th century which also india was able to restrict 
but the invasions went on and on and on and the medieval centuries were occupied by struggle for existence struggle for survival the very survival of us the survival of our civilization culture was at stake and in fighting for that survival we ended up by kind of neglecting not being able to keep up with the progress of science and technology like when babar would invade the rajputs under rana sanga opposed him they were bravest of the soldiers and the bravest of the army but babar had artillery and us indians did not have artillery artillery was a consequence of development of science and technology similarly you would understand that the britishers coming from a small island 5000 kilo miles away 8000 kilometers away just a bunch of britishers were eventually able to subjugate and defeat entire india that is that sad and dark chapter of our history about which all of us should feel ashamed ashamed as to how a small bunch of people organizing themselves into an east india company were eventually able to subjugate the whole continental size india is a story shameful for all of us as indians but one of the most important reasons why the small uh, britishers were able to subjugate india is development of science and technology and we lagged and our enemies always had better science better technology advanced technology therefore advanced military and advanced ammunition and everything that one lesson reason i am saying this is because shivaji maharaj stands out as that exception during medieval ages where he learned that lesson and tried to inculcate that lesson amongst us that also takes me to a beautiful story which talks about learning lessons pow power of learning at individual level and at the collective level and you may call that collective level as like family society the state and the whole nation and the whole world power of learning so one of my idols is indeed unquestionably the greatest scientist of modern humanity i think everyone will agree that albert einstein occupies that place of the greatest scientist of modern humanity unquestionably in my mind he is like a hero he is an inspiring figure during his school days he was considered to be a slow and a backward student so the teachers had repeatedly criticized him heavily when it came to university education he was denied admission into a specialist college for physics in germany at that point of time saying that he is weak in german in physics einstein is weak in physics man come on saying that einstein is weak in physics is like saying that lata mangeshkar does not have proper sur or like amitabh bachchan doesn't know about acting and so on and so forth that einstein he went on to achieve great heights in physics he is as great a human being as he is great scientist he also faced 
ups and downs successes and failures in his life like any and every human being faces but at each stage he went on learning further that einstein had to leave germany after the rise of hitler in germany and hitler actively advocated the policies of jewish hatred so another german scientist herzenberg gave a tip to einstein that his life was in danger and that he should escape and in fact herzenberg helped einstein escape to united states of america einstein found all his honor over there he had already by that time got nobel prize and especially you i expect you to know the basics of the theory of relativity the special theory of relativity that he initially presented then the general theory and then the quantum theory and all photo uh, electric effect and brownian motion and all i'm taking this time to lay down the groundwork of the story such a great einstein he was teaching at princeton university in usa princeton is in new jersey and what a great honor and pleasure for the students that they were learning physics directly at the hands of einstein and how beautiful that interaction must have been by that time of course he had grown physically old he was already the rock star of the world and then comes a day when einstein was standing on a bus stop on the side of the main gate of princeton university i have had occasion to visit the university and i find it a place of pilgrimage tirtha kshetra this is where einstein used to teach the footpath opposite the main gate of princeton university is still there the bus stop the story of which i am telling narrating to you now it is still there so like another place of pilgrimage and old einstein with all his hair grown uh, and uh, over his shoulders one evening he was standing there after his lectures were over there came a young american in his 20s tall white well built one could see that he is also taking regular exercise based on his built up and he was carrying a lot of books in his hand so when you stand at the bus stop you eventually take a look at who else is standing at the bus stop and your eyes do fall on uh, like bunch of books so einstein looked at this young man saw the books all the books were physics books so einstein just asked that young man young man who are you that young man responded with his swollen chest that i am a doctor of physics and then that young man turned towards einstein and asked old man and old man may i ask you who are you now like i told you einstein was famous this young man also must have studied einstein but he didn't know how einstein looks so he had no way of knowing that actually the person standing by his side is the god of physics standing right over there so einstein says young man who are you the young man with a swollen chest says i am a doctor of physics and old man may i ask you who are you einstein responded by saying i am a student of physics that mindset is the power of learning always being a student always taking lessons in and when einstein also says i am a student of physics he tells us about the power and the pleasure of 
learning and that goes on goes on throughout our life i do expect especially engineering college students to understand this equation and derive a great pleasure of understanding this equation the equation being the simplest one f of x tends to infinity x is pursuit of knowledge and our learning goes on and on and on forever it goes on and it should go on and learning never stops until the last breath that is the power of learning it is also the great pleasure of learning i always tell the students this another equation in f of x tends to infinity x is pursuit of knowledge and that pursuit of knowledge is never complete it never becomes infinity that is a very different adhyatmic stage about which i will not uh, speak today and restrict myself but pursuit of knowledge is an endless process it goes on and on and on and actually another equation that i share with everyone is pursuit of knowledge is equal to pursuit of happiness that happiness in life the moment i speak this equation i indeed expect you people to immediately understand what a great pleasure pursuit of knowledge is what kind of serene happiness is induced by pursuit of knowledge i'm sure your brain will release memories about those moments when we suddenly understand something and the greatest pleasure that we derive out of understanding something understanding gnana gnana knowledge that moment of revelation is a great pleasure if actually we had kind of some more time i myself would have shared a couple of stories with you of those delightful moments i sensed and experienced let me try just one very briefly normally i take my own time to narrate this story but based on the fact that i'm talking to engineering college students i will rather be quick it so happens that mathematics is also my favorite subject i have always enjoyed it and that process of learning and knowing more and more is also from maths so later on i i joined the commerce faculty really i left the science faculty for different reasons i'll not go into them right now but during our times of university years even commerce faculty offered the option of picking higher maths now i picked it and we had calculus at 12th standard that is cbse my school belong to the central board of secondary education so there also we had calculus i wanted to continue with that calculus in the college i picked it up as long as i had done my hsc with cbse i did not understand calculus i never understood calculus and when the teacher used to explain in the classroom all dy by dx change in y with respect to change in x and sometimes that delta to be written as a small greek letter delta and sometimes capital greek letter delta i was not clear about the concept and therefore you will understand that i did not understand the subsequent differential and integral calculus also so i was worried so i was asking some senior friends at that point of time so a senior friend from engineering college his name i still remember dilip this is a story of some 45 years ago he recommended to me a beautiful book by bertrand russell the name of this book is abc of relativity he said you read that and you will begin to understand calculus especially the whole key to calculus understanding change in y 
with respect to change in x so during holidays after we finished our cbsc exams and before i joined the college before the results were out even during holidays as i was enjoying holidays participating sports a lot reading a lot i looked for this book by bertrand russell i found it in old bookshop and on the very first page russell explains that nothing in the world is steady everything is moving everything is changing and two entities that change they with respect to each other have a ratio russell explains that the moon revolves around the earth moon revolves around itself also and at the same time revolves around the earth but in such a way that we earth people always get to see only one side of moon the ratio and that earth also revolves revolves around herself and carries the moon to revolve around the sun so everything is always changing but their ratio of change can be mathematically understood it is change in y with respect to change in x and that was that moment that was that moment of great pleasure of having understood the real key to calculus and thereafter i went on studying till this day i enjoy the study of especially mathematical concepts i enjoy the study of absolutely everything basically i enjoy the process of learning because i have understood this great delight and also the equation that learning never stops learning keeps you young learning gives you great happiness and so on and so forth therefore i realize and live by this equation pursuit of happiness is equal to pursuit of knowledge or vice versa pursuit of knowledge is equal to pursuit of happiness modern neuroscience also tells us that continual learning keeps our brain fresh mind you our brain is our greatest asset and as we go on learning it means we are guiding the wiring of our brain that all our eyes and ears and skin and these are all data collecting instruments they collect the data form an electrochemical impulse and a neuron carries that electrochemical impulse to the brain to nerves the brain then decodes interprets and gives us the meaning and based on that it is the brain that issues command for our karmendriya the gnanendriyas are data collecting instruments and karmendriyas are executives but it is all the way the brain and its wiring formed by neurons so there is a very beautiful sentence in neuroscience the sentence is that the neurons that fire together wire together that wiring is called neural network and when we say that someone is intelligent it means his brain his or her brain is network that way so we find that person intelligent we can guide this neural network of our brain researches in neuroscience have shown and proven that when we are learning something our brain is at its best and in fact in the process of learning the brain keeps developing further ever better and better for a long time neuroscience told us that the development of brain okay the neural network stops at a certain age between 25 to 
there was a time when neuroscience used to say that the brain functioning is at its best around our physical age of 29 but that perception has changed now that the brain can form new network the brain can form new connections they are called synapses even beyond age 29 even as you keep growing say older and older physically it may become difficult but it's not impossible and then neuroscience now tells us that the key to keeping our brain sharp keeping our brain focused the key is constant learning and learn something and there are so many beautiful stories neuroscience has proven that the process of learning enlightens our brain actually when we learn neuroscience actually physically says that the wiring lights up there is brain wiring and that lights up and when new learning stops there is no further lighting in the brain no further forming new network new circuits new synapses then the brain falls into its own comfort zone and as long as the brain is in its comfort zone there is no new learning we have to lift we have to push our own brain outside that comfort zone and the ace way to do it is to learn something always learn something read something new think something new let curiosity be there let your creativity keep flourishing forever the power of learning is in addition to deriving great pleasure keeping our brain young that i can tell you for sure that as long as the brain is young you will continue to be young you will continue to feel young and the brain will continue to form new networks then we are also living in a times which are changing at a very fast pace we have been we have always said that the whole progress of humanity for thousands of years previously is actually overshadowed by the progress in science and technology in the 19th and 20th century but in the latter part of 20th century that progress in science and technology further picked up the pace all internet all genetics various generations of even computers and now we have entered the time where knowledgeable people say that all human development so far on one side and the changes that are about to happen during this decade this the decade of 2020s and those changes have already begun to happen they are happening at a very fast pace on the other side this other side will weigh more than the first one we are living right in the midst of tremendous change and you engineering students are witnessing that change from close quarters i would be happier if you are not only witnessing it but you are actually participating the change that our job is not just to follow that change our job is to lead that change but things are changing at such a fast pace mind you and india is gearing up to keep up with that pace i am happy about that so ever newer and newer things are coming up before even we are comfortable with the so called 2g technology there comes 3g and ever newer models of phones 
before they are like settled and comfortable with 3G, here is 4G. And now the whole world and India also is not lagging in the race. We are already talking about 5G. And then after various generations of computers, we are talking about and developing fifth generation computers. India is among those top six countries to have developed the fifth generation computer indigenously. And now the technology is advancing way beyond that to now go into artificial intelligence, robotics, and therefore we have what is called as Industrial Revolution 4th, fourth, fourth Industrial Revolution. It is known as Industry 4.0. And those changes are bringing fundamental changes in our personal life, in our family life, in the organization of society, state, nation, and the whole world. Those changes have been summarized in the term Society 5.0. Society 5.0. So things are changing at such a fast pace. It is just a couple of years since we started hearing about the so-called cryptocurrency again, floated by someone private based on the blockchain technology. And suddenly all these terms like non-fungible tokens and all become important. And it's not only that they are known all over the world, they begin to affect India they begin to affect even our personal life so much so that the government has to sit up, take notice and form a policy regarding crypto slash digital currency. So in the latest budget, government announced our own policy to float RBI will float our own digital currency. It will not just be digital rupee, digital payments already have overtaken cash payments and all. So we are living in the midst of tremendous change. This decade of 2020 is supposed to change our life beyond recognition. And during that time of fast paced change, our only way to not only cope up with the change, but lead the change, and then not only lead the change, but enjoy the change. Be that change. Our only solution and hope lies in the power of learning. It is all the time that we will have to keep learning. Our Bharatiya word for that is Swadhyay. Swadhyay. Learning how to learn. That as ever newer subject keeps coming in front of me, I need to learn. It is very recently that India introduced GST. That was a revolutionary change in the indirect tax structure in the country. And a whole lot of departments and people had to undergo a different training, orientation, and ever newer learning. That is bound to happen. So Swadhyay means capacity to learn anything on one's own. One soul, Swadhyay, learning how to learn. So we do not depend only on the formal syllabi, the formal colleges and universities and formal educational systems and all, but we learn, know how to learn. And thus throughout our life, ever newer things keep coming up. We will go on learning ever newer and newer things and keep our brain young and the neural network always be fresh and refreshed so that the brain lights up. Swadhyay. And there are many self-study skills as against learning by rote, ratte baji, spoon feeding, as against that, it is Swadhyay. And the defining feature of Swadhyay is insistence on understanding. Not ratte baji, not mugging up, but understanding anything and everything I am studying. So when I understand dy by dx, after reading ABC of Relativity by Bertrand Russell, 
my swadhyay continues i have always enjoyed that power of learning i continue to teach myself to continue to learn based on many great people that i have seen pandit satavlekar was a great freedom fighter originally a sanskrit pandit and he knew 32 different languages 16 of which were indian languages and another 16 were non indian languages he lived a fulfilling life of 103 years that year when he crossed his centenary 100 a journalist called him up and asked him pandit ji what are your new year resolutions at age of 100 come on man at 100 a journalist asked pandit satavlekar pandit ji what are your new year resolutions and this great pandit ji said i have just started learning portuguese and spanish at age 100 another such beautiful example that has always inspired me is of a 93 year old tabla maestro ahmed jan thirakwa kha sahib when he turned his like 80s in bharatiya tradition there is sahasra chandra darshan a person turns 81 it means such a person saw 81 a uh, a uh, uh, a thousand purnimas full moons so it is celebrated that celebration was a public function in which a journalist was to uh, uh, interview amaja thirakwa kha sahib and through that interaction kha sahib was to give a demo of solo tabla so as the birthday celebration started and the journalist started interviewing amajan thirakwa kha sahib he introduced him to the pe- people and for asking a question to amajan thirakwa kha sahib he turned towards him and he said he was about to ask a question he started by saying kha sahib aap to ustadon ke ustad hai ustad is a maestro aur aap to ustadon ke ustad hai the teacher the guru of even maestros So he was about to ask something. He turned towards Khan Sahib and said, "Aap to ustadon ke ustad hai." Ahmed Jan Thirakwa Khan Sahib stopped him halfway through, cut him short, and he said, "Beta, ham kaha ke ustadon ke ustad? Hame to abhi abhi title ka andaza ana shuru hua hai. Trital, the very first tal that is taught in tabla." and amajan thirakwa kha sahib at age 81 having become really ustadon ke ustad is still polite down to earth he is not arrogant he is not over confident he does not follow that no all approach in fact he says ki beta hum kaha ke ustadon ke ustad hame to abhi abhi title ka andaza na shuru hua hai and then great durga bhagwat who i look upon as like my guru she was a great anthropologist a great freedom fighter a great gandhian and i had an occasion to meet her at her age of 92 mind you she was then suffering from parkinson so she found it very hard to even walk even at home she had grown extremely old and frail and her like small hand and small stature uh, had grown so old i remember one meeting at her age of 92 when i met touched her feet it's like taking blessings ashirwad from our grandmother and out of just curiosity i asked her ki bhai navin ka hai what is new you are doing and this 92 year old parkinson suffering 
frail durga bai said with the enthusiasm of a 19 year old girl young girl she said i have found new jataka granth jataka are stories of buddha so she said, i have she said i have found new jataka granth in tibetan language and in order to translate them into marathi i have started learning tibetan what a great capacity to learn and these people have always lived a fulfilling life they act as great inspiring beacons our ancient bharatiya educational system also tells us swadhyayan ma pramada this is a prayer from vedas that when a student completes his or her formal education becomes a snataka you can say a bachelor or a master in in modern terminology and is now to join the mainstream of society as an earning member and a responsible adult member while sending him off from the ashram guru used to tell him and that prayer was swadhyayan ma pramadah swadhyay continue to learn and never make a mistake in learning new things that your education is not over it is only your stint at the ashram is over but as you go back to normal life remember to continue swadhyay so it is with that vedic prayer that i will also take leave of you the prayer swadhyayan ma pramadah is the great power of learning the learning that keeps us happy and fresh let us all be happy and fresh and continue to enjoy through our power of learning thank you and all my best wishes for all of you thank you sir for such an insightful lecture i wouldn't be wrong in saying this on the behalf of the audience that this lecture gave us a new insight into looking at things from a different perspective you really inspired us with your words and i'm sure we all learned a thing or two from you we will now begin the q and a session to answer a few of our audience questions uh, sir is there anything you would like to share with the young minds who aspire to join the civil services there is a lot really why something there is a lot i wonder whether uh, as per your convenience we may have a separate exclusive session focused on uh, civil service or competitive exams for engineers all i will say within the restriction of the time limit is that more and more engineers are turning to civil services and i look upon that as a positive and a creative phase because even civil services are turning more technology oriented the whole job of governance itself is now becoming all technology oriented so whose minds those whose minds are developed to be very comfortable with technology they are most welcome to join civil services so do study for civil services you will succeed and like i said my eternal best wishes for your success in all life including success in civil services thank you sir uh, i am sure it will help us to be successful in the near future uh, this was an amazing session we got to learn many new things and we are extremely grateful that you could join us today we all understand now what you mean when you talk about the power of learning also thank you to our wonderful audience for tuning in we hope you all enjoyed the session i saumil parsodkar take your leave for the day until next time this is techno anza vijay ti